So let's solve the question first non-repeating character. Okay, reading the question here. The problem statement says given a string S consisting of lowercase Latin letters, normal English alphabets, return the first to non-repeating characters in the string. If there is no non-repeating character, you can return the dollar symbol. All right. And now when you return the dollar symbol, driver will, uh, will output the uh, number negative one. Okay. So that's just symbolic. You just need to do what is being told. That means if you do not get any non-repeating number, sorry, not repeating character, you simply return the dollar symbol. That's all. Okay. Driver will take care of all the other things. Now, what is this non-repeating character? Let's try to see it with an example. So here, as you can see in this example, when a string will be given to you in the output, assume it's hello. There are a few characters which do not have multiple occurrences. Okay. Out of these characters, which server is occurring for the first time, you have to return that. Let's see H. Does H occur anywhere else in the string? Well, it doesn't. So our answer is H as given here. Well, this is like this was a straightforward example and you got the answer instantly. Let's try to deal with this one. It says Z X V C Z P T X Y Z V Y. Okay, a complex random string. Now we need to figure out the first non-repeating character. Let's check with this number well this number repeats x also repeats v also repeats and the answer eventually would come out to be c now c is not repeating anywhere and you have encountered it for the first time what we what you will do is you will return c as the answer now that we have talked about this so what could be the very naive the brute force method of the solution now let's discuss the brute force to this problem so here i have taken the sample string so what do i have to do is i have to pick up each and every element one by one and then i have to check whether that element is repeating in the string or not. Okay, let's say I picked up my Z. Now I have to travel my string from here to here in search of another Z. This is the position I'm considering. So after that, I have X, correct? I did not find Z, no Z, no Z, but here I found Z. So here I can say that Z cannot be my first non-repeating character because it has shown repetition. So once I found that, okay, Z is not the possible one. Let's go to the next one. Next one is X. So now for X, I am again going to move from this point to this point, from beginning to the end of this uh, string, checking that whether I get X or not. Here I got uh, Z. This is the one that I'm considering. And if I got any value of uh, like any character, which is X, apart from this one, you can see here, I found one more X. So here I can say that X is also not my possible first non repeating character. So I'm going to get. I'll simply be moving ahead now. Okay, now I came to B. For this, I again have to travel from beginning till the end. And every time, what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do is uh, that I will check that whether there is any character V or not. Well, I did not find B, did not find V. But at this point, I'll find V, and V would also not be the possible first not repeating character for me. And this, like in this manner, I need to check each and every uh, character and see whether it is repeating or not. The moment I find a character which is not repeating, in our case, it uh, it is C, which is not repeating here. So I can say this is the first non-repeating character. Why are we saying it is first? Because we are performing our traversal from left to right. The first value that we get that is not uh, that is not repeating, it will be the first non-repeating character. So this surely would give us the answer. But how much time are we consuming in this one? We are going to each and every element. That means I am taking order of n for every element that I pick up. I am checking that whether that is repeating or not for that too i have to travel in the string from beginning till the end that is also order of n so i'm doing order of n amount of work for order of n characters that are picked up eventually the time complexity of this one is going to be order of n squared right so once it is order of n squared talking about the space complexity well we are not consuming any extra space i don't need any space to store my answer or any such array which is growing with the input size Thus my space complexity is going to be order of one here. And this is not acceptable time complexity. So to counter this with another approach, we can simply use a hash map or you can have a very similar implementation using a frequency array. Both of the things are completely similar, just the different data structure, that's all. So in this, what do we do is we either create a frequency array or we create a, uh, a, a frequency hash table or a frequency dictionary for that matter. What I will do is I will traverse in this string from uh, the first letter till the last every time 
what will I do? I'll have either my empty dictionary or I would have a complete array of 26 length. I'd have a complete array that would be actually representing all of the alphabets till the end. Now this actually, uh, I would consider this as a mapping. Okay, zero would be representing my A. We are talking in the small case, sorry. A, then one will be B, two will be C and so on and so forth. The last would be Z, simple. This is what, like this is a, a very similar kind of way. These things are acting as my keys and the spaces of array or you can say array cells would be acting as the blocks uh, for my values. So once we have both of the structures set up, what will we do? We will start traversing our array from this point, from the very first alphabet or the character you want to say. Every time what you have to do is you have to see, okay, in the dictionary, if the key is not already present, you would create up a new key and you would add the corresponding value as one, representing that this key or this um, character has occurred for one time. Similarly, in the frequency array, what you have to do is you have to go to the respective key or the respective index, which is representing a 25. Uh, initially, you can have zero or any placeholder there. But once you have seen that, you would place one. That means it has occurred for the one time. Now going on to the next element, x not present, you trade up a key, add the value. x would be somewhere here, you would just put one. Then v, new, um, new key, a new value here. c, again, a new key, a new value. The same thing would happen in the frequency array as well. Then you can see something will change at this point. After c, you have another z. So in this z, what will happen? You already have a key present. So this time you're not going to like create up a new one, but what you will do is you will add up one to the existing value. Now this is how you would be keeping a count of all the elements. Fine, for B, let me just make it very quickly. It is one for T, you have one for X. Now the value will increase. For Y, the uh, Y is going to be a new one. Z, one more value will increase. For V, value will increase. For Y, value will increase, okay? Now this is the chart made up. If I write it clearly here, the chart says, Z has occurred for three times, X has occurred for two times, B has occurred for two times, C for once, B for once, T for once, Y for two times. This is a chart. You can get it from either of the data structure. Now, once you have had that, what do you need to do is you again need to go back to your array, to your string. And once you traverse, you just need to check correspondingly, okay, Z, is Z having one as the frequency? Well, this, no. This time, no. Z has three as a frequency. Avoid Z. X. Go to X. And fetching this is or is order of one only. Okay. You fetch that. Uh, fetch the value of X. All right. It's two. X is not going to be my answer. V will not be my answer because this also has value two. C, on the other hand, once you go and check the number of occurrences of C, C would have one. So C becomes the first point, or you can say the first non-repeating character. Let's analyze the time complexity of this approach very quickly. For the first thing, what you were doing while you were constructing your data structure, you went for one complete traversal. That costed you order of n, okay? Again, for the next time when you have to go and when you have to check what, what is happening, you are going for the element and you are looking for the first non-repeating. Every time you are trying to fetch the value from either of the data structure, that is just going to cost you order of one. The biggest component still would come out or like come out to be order of n and this is what is your time complexity what will be your space complexity well again it is just going to be order of 26 because we cannot have more than 26 keys or we cannot have an array longer than 26 because we just need to store the value so this can also be considered as constant now coming on to one even better approach what we are doing here is we are taking up two cycles we are taking up two iterations and if you want to see that in code, you can see it here. We have created, uh, we have created up that frequency array like this, initialized with the value zero in the beginning. Then I am just making up the frequency table. Once I've made up the frequency table, I'll traverse it once more. After traversing, I'll just check that, okay, for which element, for which element I have the frequency one. If I find that, I would return that element at that point. Eventually, if I do not find any element with the frequency one, Remember that you have to return a dollar symbol because that is what the question, uh, the question is asking for. Now coming on to, again, the number of iterations. We had two iterations for this approach, but what if I just tell you that we can have that in one single iteration as well? For that, you need to find out what unnecessary work are we doing here. 
well, we are trying to maintain record or you can say the frequency of characters which actually do not need to be included or you can say which are occurring multiple times. So it is a slight waste of time for us to keep on calculating that. The slight answer could be, I just need to maintain a visited array. Seeing that once I am going to any element for the second time, then I can simply mark that, okay, this has been visited twice. So even if like after this point, no matter how many times it comes, I do not need to keep on counting its frequency or store any sort of data because that is the slight extra work that I'm doing in this question, sorry, in this approach. So I'm going to just correct that in my further approach in the approach number three. Let's suppose I have this string, uh, R-A-C-E-C-A-R. For this, I need to find out, again, the first non-repeating character. We would start with a visited array, okay? Again, it is going to be zero to 25, the 26 um, size array. Mapping would be same, zero would be A, one would be, uh, one would be B and two would be C and so on and so forth every place would be initialized with negative one representing that none of the values has occurred none of the values have occurred so far i would start traversing my string from this point let's say i have r now for mapping of r i know i have to map it at the number 17 the index 17 what value should i place here now this time i'm not counting this time i'm not counting this time i'm keeping the track of the indices so the moment i have to fill the value I would fill the index of r so i have filled the index of r which is zero here now once that is done let's proceed with our approach assume i have a i have to do the same thing a is occurring here it is mapped at zero at the zero at index i would mark one because one is the index of a going on to c i would mark the same thing at two index i need to mark the value two because that is the index of this c going to e I will do the same thing again. E will be uh, coming here, mapped at the fourth index of listed array. What value do I have to keep? It is occurring at the third index in my string. So I'll keep three here. Now things uh, get interesting when we go on to the second C. What happens? Once I'm here at the second C, now I need not to keep the track of four or any other value. See, it is here, like the four is the uh, index of it in the string. But I do not now, like I don't have to keep the track of it now. What I simply do is I would simply represent it with another symbol. So I'm using minus two for this time, minus two representing that this element has occurred multiple times. So we need not to take care of that. Simple. So uh, repro uh, like keep in mind that minus two doesn't have any integer meaning here. We are just using minus one or minus two as placeholder values. Minus one uh, initially, meaning that none of the values have occurred. Negative two means that this value has occurred multiple times, okay? Otherwise, we are storing the indices. Now, once I go on ahead, the same thing will happen with A. The value we had now will be replaced by negative two. Once that is done, uh, okay, we also have one more uh, element to go. R, we are going to do the same thing. I would say minus two here. Now, what do I need to do? I have this listed array made up. Now, simply, I need to find out which is like in the entire array, which I have made here of 26 elements, I just need to traverse and find out the minimum position value because the minimum value that this array has, the minimum positive value that this array has is actually going to be my answer. And I'm uh, double quoting, I'm talking about minimum positive value. So negative two and negative ones are not considered, but, uh, but any value which has zero, one, two, three, or any other index, because we are storing values, we are storing index as values here. So in such case, assume three is the smallest thing. That means E has occurred for the first time, which is non-repeating. So this is a slightly smarter way, analyzing the complexity of it. How much iterations are we taking of the string? Of the string, we are just taking up one single iteration, right? So it is order of N. Because for the next time, we are iterating uh, in the visited array. Visited array is of limited number, okay? If you want to add it, you can put it like this. Plus order of 26. But this again is constant. Dominating factor is order of n. Order of n would be called as time complexity of this approach. Are we using an extra space? Yeah, indeed we do. But this is not growing with the input size. This is constant. I'm using order of 26 space. Let's see the code for it. Let's define the maximum character. I made up a visited array in which I'm simply 
writing minus uh, one as a placeholder value, representing that none of the uh, characters have occurred so far. Then I'm having the one single iteration that I have to for this single approach. For that, I'm just keeping up the indexes or the indices of it, of the elements. Otherwise, if that is not the case, that means I'm going to the value. Okay, let me repeat. I'm checking that, okay, at the ith value, when I'm going to fill it, if it is minus one, then I fill up the index. Okay, I fill up the index from my string. But if it is anything else other than minus one, that means it is some index value. And once I get that situation, I would just replace it with negative two. So that is what I'm doing here. After this iteration has ended, I would have my complete visited array as per my logic created. Now what do I have to do is I have to simply check what is the minimum value present in my visited array. So once I have that, I can simply return that as my answer. Uh, like dollar symbol will be returned if I do not have that, like do not uh, have any minimum value. That means all the values uh, could have been changed to negative two or negative one, which won't be the case. That could be the case in the case of empty string. But all right, but uh, none of the value would be a positive one. It All of the values either would be negative two or negative one in this case. So if it happens, then what you have to do, you have to return the, uh, a dollar symbol. Otherwise you have to return the minimum value that you have found. So the approach is quite simple, but we have provided a little optimization and we have reduced the extra work that we were, uh, we were doing using any frequency array or any hash map, okay? Let's try to run the code now, all right? So for this one, it is giving us the expected output. Let's try to submit that. All right, so it has passed on all the test cases. So the approach is quite simple. I hope you've got that. I hope you've got the complexity analysis of both of, both of the approaches. And uh, make sure that, again, as I always say, please make sure that once you take up your example on your own, try to uh, do the diagrams, try to uh, dry down the code using pen and pencil. Uh, so once you're done with that and the logic is clear, and if you like the solution of this video, then make sure you drop that in the comments and you like this video. Thanks.